All right, this is 1.5 triangles. All right, this is uh, two pictures of right triangles. You'll notice there's one right angle. So the definition would be, well, select my pen. The definition would be a triangle with one right angle. And only one. Acute triangle. Acute triangle has all acute angles you can see in both examples. So the definition would be a triangle with all acute angles. Okay. Next one is obtuse triangle. In the two examples, you see only one obtuse angle here, only one obtuse angle there. So the definition of this would be a triangle with only one obtuse angle. So those three that we just identified, they were um, being classified by their angles. This one's going to be a little bit different. Scaling triangle, they don't really give me much on the angles. They do give me information about the sides. And so if you look at the three sides on both of these, they're all different. So the definition of a scaling triangle is a triangle with no congruent sides because they're all different. Now we can identify this one on the right as a right scaling triangle. Okay, and the one on the left would be obtuse scaling triangle. Okay, so there's that one. Next one is an equilateral triangle. You'll notice that all the sides are equal. So, and we talked about what equilateral means in the 1.4 polygons. So this is a triangle with all sides congruent. Okay. This one, isosceles, is a little tricky because of that guy right there. So on this definition, you have two sides equal on the other, and this one has all three. So the definition is going to look like this. A triangle with two or more sides congruent or equal. Congruent and equal mean the same thing. This one here, though, I would prefer you to write equilateral if that question is ever asked. But the reason it's in this group of triangles is because it has the same properties as the isosceles triangles, okay? But definitely identify it as equilateral. Parts of an isosceles triangle. So there's specific names and you gotta know these. The two congruent sides, okay, because of those marks right here, they're red, congruent, congruent. I just refer to those either as the legs or just plain congruent sides. The other side that is not congruent to anything, that would be known as the base, okay? And it's not because it's at the bottom, it's because it's just the other side. So like for instance, look at this triangle over here. That's isosceles, but the base is now kind of on top, okay? So the base is just the non-congruent side. And then the angles have names. So the base is at the, um, over here, so the two angles next to the base are gonna be known as the base angles. And then the other angle is gonna be known as the vertex angle, okay? So just remember those terms. All right, so let's practice classifying these. So this one has all equal sides, all equal angles. So this is an equilateral triangle. 
This one on the right, I don't know anything about the side, so you can't say anything's congruent. So this one is going to be scaling. And then what kind of angle do we see? I see an obtuse, so we're going to say scaling obtuse triangle. Next one, I see two equal sides here. So it's definitely going to be isosceles. Oops. And then I see an obtuse angle right there. So uh, isosceles obtuse triangle. Okay, and these two words are interchangeable. So if you call it obtuse isosceles, that's the same thing. This one on the right, I see a right angle, so it's definitely going to be a right triangle. What kind of right triangle? I see all sides that are different. So this will be a right scaling triangle. And this one here talks about an isosceles triangle. So they want me to find point C so that the triangle ABC is isosceles. Okay, so that's the key word there. List all possible answers. So this is where it gets a little tricky because you got to give every single answer. So the first one that you probably notice is if I stick a point right here in the middle and then I connect these two to here like so, would you say this piece is congruent to that? Absolutely. That is a possible answer for point C. Then we probably notice, well, I could probably do the same thing down here. I could connect A to that point, B to that point, and those also look congruent. Okay, by now you're probably thinking, oh, all of the points on the y-axis would work out. Right, so how do we write that down to include every single one of those points for point C? Well, this point here up top is 0, negative 4. The one down at the bottom is 0, negative 7. And then if you keep selecting any point on the y-axis, it's going to be 0, any number. So that's how you're going to list the first answer. It's going to be 0, any number, but you don't want to write the, those words down. We're going to write the letter Y because that represents any number. Now, there is one point that it cannot be. This one right here that I just colored in green. That cannot be point C because it's on the actual segment. So it can't be just any number. You have to say Y cannot be negative 1 because if it's negative 1, then it won't create a triangle. So this is a way to include a lot of possible answers by using variables. Okay, now there's actually still some more answers. For instance, the side AB is 6 units long. Is there a way you can draw 6 unit long segments? The answer is yes. I could go up straight from B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right here. I could make that C, and watch when I connect it, like so. I could go there. That is 6 units long, and right there. So now look, this piece is congruent to that piece, which is isosceles as well. So that would be a coordinate to write down also, which is 3, 5. Okay, you can probably think, oh, I could draw it on the other side too. Correct. So right here, you could do that. Connect it. Connect. Oops, not that side, sorry. There we go, those two. There's another answer for... So that would be negative 3, 5. Okay, there's two more down here. Go down 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That'll put me right there. And so that one would be connected here. That's 6 units long. And then I connect it there. Okay, and I know it's starting to look really busy. So if you ever want to grab an extra sheet of graph paper, you and do separately different graphs on the graph paper. And you can always use a graph paper during the quiz. There's that one, the last one over here, just kind of a little symmetrical over on the other end. Six units long. 
Am I going from there? It goes. There we go. Okay, so let's write down those last coordinates. Three comma negative seven. And then negative three comma negative. So those are all the possible answers. So we took care of that right there. All right, let's go to some constructing of triangles. So this one here, you construct an equilateral triangle and it says to name it GAL. So obviously, and it says to do it on, so that's the key word, on the segment, okay? Because sometimes I want you to do it away from the segment. This one says on the segment, so make that noticeable. Okay, so equilateral means all three sides are equal. So the main thing you want to do with your compass is get the size of that segment. Okay, exactly. And then kind of always ask yourself, well, where is, if I call this point Z and point A, where is point L going to be? Probably somewhere over here. And sometimes it's okay to do a sketch. That kind of looks equilateral, right? So you know it's going to be somewhere over there. The other possibility is probably up here. Well, that's going to probably end up in the letter, so I really don't want to draw it that way. So you got the measure with your compass. You're going to put it here and make an arc over here because, remember, you're copying this segment, basically. And then you want the other third side to be the same size. Put it on the G and make an arc. So now you can get your ruler and connect from G to that intersection point, and that'll be a segment of the triangle, and then one more, and there it is, okay? And you could even, if you wanted to, you could kind of measure them in centimeters, and you'll see they end up being the same, okay? And then don't forget to label that one point L, okay? So I'm looking for two arcs on this one okay two arcs for that equilateral would you probably do an isosceles triangle in a similar way yes you would okay so if you practice constructing isosceles triangles um that's the way you would do this also because these two sides are going to be equal which is why the equilateral triangle is in the isosceles category because again they're they got the same properties Okay, last one, construct this triangle given these specific parts. Um, we have an angle, we have, and two sides. Now, here's the key thing. You notice this is an R. Where else do you see an R? That's the angle that's going to go uh, pretty much on that point, okay? So the first way you want to start this construction to create this triangle is probably to start with either angle R or the side that includes point R. You don't want to start with side QS because you don't know the measures of angle Q or S. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a side. Okay, and so I'm going to draw a long line because that's how you copy a segment that we learned back in 1.1. I'm going to copy this one first so I need to get the exact measure of RQ. There it is. So I'm going to come over here. Okay, so since I'm placing it on the left side, that's going to be my point R. I'm going to make an arc. So guess what? That's going to be point Q. All right, so you got the bottom side of your triangle. What can you do next? Some of y'all might want to copy QS, but you don't know the angle of Q. So you're going to make an arc, and then you're not sure, well, how do I draw it? Do I draw it this way, that way, that way, that way, this way? There's lots of ways to draw that from Q to S, see all those different possibilities? So we don't want to do that next because that's too many unknown things. So let me get rid of all that. So the only other option is to copy angle R. So now I'm going to go to R. This is the part where a lot of you guys struggle with is remembering how to copy an angle. So to copy an angle, the first step is to make an arc on the angle and then come over here to point R where we want to copy it and make that same arc probably a little bit longer just like I did 
And then way back when I taught you how to copy an angle, I said probably label these two points A and B because that's the next step that's important. So you're going to measure from A to B, which may or may not be the size of your compass. Notice it's not the size that I just used, so you got to get that measure. And then once you get the, the size of that, come over here and come in that exact same position. You see how you have it? like this. I'm just going to copy it over here. I'm going to put it on this point here and I'm going to make an arc. That would be the exact size of angle R. So now I'm going to place it here, send my ruler through that intersection point. And there we are. All right. Now I have a pretty much two sides of my triangle. The last thing I need to figure out is where point S is. So the way you figure out where point S is, we're gonna measure from Q to S exactly. And where should I place the compass at? Should I place it at R? No, we didn't measure RS, we measured QS. So you're gonna place it at Q and then the compass will lead us to where point S is going to be. There it is right there. That's where point S is going to be because that's the exact size. Now, some of y'all probably came a little lower. That's actually correct, too. So this one's going to have two possible answers. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to just pick the big one because it's not a big deal. So make an arc right there. There we are. And then now all you have to do is connect Q to that intersection point. And what is that intersection point going to be called? It's going to be our last letter that we haven't used, which is S. There's your triangle. Okay? You created a triangle with those two uh, segments, which you have the arcs to prove it. And then the uh, angle was copied with those three arcs to prove it. So total arcs you should have to get this correct with no deductions. One, two, three, four, five. Five arcs is what you want to see in the end. So practice this again if you need to. Just draw your own angle. Draw some sides like that. And you should be able to practice it on your own.